Spring transfer portal window officially closed on Sunday and Spartan fans were left hoping that it closed maybe a few days earlier. Michigan State dealt blow after blow over the weekend with its starting quarterback over the last two years, Peyton Thorne, leading wide receiver Keon Coleman and starting corner Charles Brantley all entering the portal. So it's time to talk portal. We got to bring in our expert portal expert, Chris Hummer and Chris, we talked about this on last show. It's, it's, no, it's no Colorado in terms of the quantity, but as it pertains to importance to the roster, ouch. I mean, what do you make of all the attrition out of East Lansing this past weekend? Definitely a thorn in the side of the Michigan State Spartans, <laughs> um, for sure. we got to stop it with the puns today, guys. <laughs> always has. So um, well done. So well done. <laughs> but yes, problematic, problematic for sure. Um, there have been rumors about Peyton Thornton entering for a while now, uh, specifically connected, at least on the back end, a little bit to Auburn. Um, I don't know if that's going to end up coming to fruition, but like, I don't, it was still very surprising with the timing for him to move this late. Um, Peyton Thorne's also kind of been in a QB battle, not kind of, he has been in a QB battle this entire um, off season with Michael Kim, a redshirt sophomore. Uh, Mel Tucker called this a battle midway through spring practice. He was not guaranteed to keep that, that job. He really struggled last year after a historic, well, not historic season for Michigan State, but a rebound season for Michigan State under Mel Tucker in 2021. Michigan State fumbled to five and seven. I think Keon Coleman might be a bigger loss for Michigan State. He's arguably the best receiver in the portal right now, and he has a ton of interest. And to lose those two in tandem on the last day of the portal when you don't have the opportunity to replace them is a really, it's a pretty crippling bro blow for the program. Chris, speaking of Big Ten transfers, Nebraska quarterback Casey Thompson put his name in the portal on Friday. Who are some QB needy programs that could be of interest for a player like Casey Thompson? Well, Casey's Casey Thompson's definitely at the forefront of a lot of teams' plans, and Auburn certainly at the forefront with Casey Thompson right now. Casey Thompson's actually currently on a visit to Auburn right now, so Auburn's going to fill a need in the portal. I don't know if it'll be Casey Thompson or Peyton Thorne, but I can almost guarantee they'll end up at least with one of the two of them. They're the two established starters in the portal right now at quarterback, along with Ben Bryant from Cincinnati. Um, other than that, it's a pretty saturated market in terms of teams looking for starters. Um, Indiana could use a starter at quarterback, potentially. There's a lot of teams that are looking for secondary players and young backups, Cincinnati, Houston, Colorado, Purdue, Louisville, TCU, maybe even Stanford, looking for another quarterback. Um, Florida has been put out there as a team kicking the tires, but I think they're happy with Graham Mertz for now, unless something really changed there in the last couple of days. So there aren't a lot of places for these quarterback dominoes to land, and Auburn is certainly going to be at the forefront of that conversation because they are going to be the team, at least at the top of these kind of portal QB market, determining uh, where these dominoes end up falling. Yeah, there are no offensive linemen in terms of need in the portal. Uh, if you have not already, go ahead and hit that like button. We are close to 100. Would love to reach that by the end of the show. So go ahead, smash it. I think I just saw Chris go and hit the like button here. Appreciate that. Uh, with the buffs, though, we got to talk Colorado. They're supplying the, most of the transfers in the portal right now. They'll always be a part of this segment. And on Sunday, tight end Seydoux Treor Traore decided to transfer this coming after you might remember he transferred into Colorado this offseason so how big a blow is this to coach prime squad from a perception standpoint just from the outside like I think it was a big deal just because we've seen such waves of Colorado players entering the portal and it never seems like a good look when you brought in a four-star transfer and he's leaving three and a half months later that doesn't look good from the outside but on the field, I, I don't really know how big of a deal this is going to be. Um, I don't know how well of a fit he was going to be at Colorado from a tight end perspective. Uh, their new offensive coordinator, Sean Lewis, doesn't really use tight ends um, coming over from Kent State. Their tight ends last year. I think their starting tight end had nine total catches. Uh, Sadeo Torre is also somebody who's not the best blocker in the world. Um, and I think long term, he might be looking for a different fit, um, maybe even positionally. So... This is not a huge loss on paper, but I just think the continuous headlines of Colorado losing players to the portal does have a slightly negative impact on the program. Ohio State had a really busy weekend, right, with landing uh, Josh Simmons from San Diego State. They also had Tywon Malone on campus, the Ole Miss defensive line transfer. They already landed one player from Ole Miss. So, Chris, what's the latest with Malone and the potential for him to 
be uh, you know with the Buckeyes next season? Well, um, unlike Josh Simmons, he left campus without committing. Um, and I think a team to watch here is still Miami. Uh, Miami has been a team I've kind of circled with Tywin Malone this entire time. Uh, he is a person who wants to continue playing baseball. Um, the Miami baseball program is pretty good. Uh, Miami has a really big need inside a defensive tackle in a way Ohio State probably doesn't, at least for an immediate starter. So the path of the field is a little easier at Miami. I would not be shocked to see Malone on campus at Miami at some point. And of those two teams, I think Miami would probably have the inside position there. Finally, a pretty solid pass catcher just hit the market. UTSA wide receiver Zachary Franklin. He had over 90 catches for nearly 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns last season. He's one of the top wide receivers in the nation. I mean, not just one of the top guys available now. So how big a shock was this and what's the latest with him? This is a career record holder for UTSA and definitely one of the best receivers in the country. And it certainly was a little bit of a shock for UTSA. Um, I don't think they were expecting to see this. This is a guy who has definitely been tampered with throughout the offseason. Nothing new for the group of five levels. Uh, these teams, if you have a good player um, that the Power Five teams want, they've definitely been tampered with this offseason. I think UTSA, more than any other program, has done a good job holding those things off because of the culture Jeff Trailers created. But at the last minute, um, Franklin decided to go in the portal. And there are a ton of teams that need an impact wide receiver. I talked to somebody in kind of around that recruitment today. Nothing's really set for Franklin right now. But if you just look at the list of teams in need of a receiver, like on that level, you've got teams like LSU, you've got teams like Florida, you've got teams like Auburn, um, TCU could use another receiver. You can go down the list. Everybody needs a playmaker of this level. And I think he's the best player in the portal right now, so he's not going to be short on options. Certainly has time to figure things out. Chris, I want to pop up a tweet that you had today, just kind of wrapping up these two portal windows that we had for the first time. And it was just showing kind of the steady amount of players who have entered the portal. And it's gone up every single year. Look at this. I'm curious, when you look at these numbers, when you, when you crunch them, what goes through your mind? What stands out about the incline year in, year out? I always think it's going to slow down, and it never does. Uh, I ask this question every offseason to people in the player personnel space. Is this the year it kind of finally slows down, and, and it just hasn't yet? Um, that 3,000 number at the top really represents 20% of FBS players. So we're seeing one-fifth of players in the sport moving in the offseason right now, and it's been two offseasons in a row of that. So it's just staggering movement in college football, and it really illustrates how much the sport has changed in just half a decade. Certainly, you know, COVID has something to do with that number as well, but uh, we're all kind of learning what this is going to look like. And Chris, we appreciate your insight. Also, go ahead and follow at 24-7 Sports Portal on Twitter. There's a lot of great information there.